What's up everybody, this is Jake at Rev6. If you like our content, be sure to like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see in our next video. Today we're gonna to be going over ring gap, um, how to check ring gap, and then we're also gonna go over uh, why you should do ring gap. Piston rings expand and contract due to heat and load through various RPMs. Uh, if the gap isn't correct, when they heat up in the cylinder bore, pistons are gonna naturally swell, your rings are gonna swell, what'll cause your end gap to actually come in contact with each other. Uh, when if that happens, you get cylinder out around, your rings, um, wrist being bent, um, they no longer sill in the cylinder. Um, it causes burning oil, uh, cylinder wall scoring. Your ring gap should be, uh, a general rule of thumb is, you know, three and a half thousandths to four thousandths multiplied by per inch per bore. Um, it's really easy to check. Um, we'll go over that later when we get down to it. Some of the tools you're gonna need for the job, you're gonna need a set of feeler gauges. You're gonna need a machinist file or a ring filer. And we'll show you that here in a minute. You're gonna need a flat blade screwdriver, a pick. Um, we actually get this one from one of our tool trucks. It's actually a miniature pry bar that works perfect. I call that the Circlip installation tool. Uh, you're gonna need a sandpaper, set of calipers, uh, recommended, optional. Um, you're also gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench or socket for the rod bolts when we get to that. I like using deep creep. We have fogging oil and contact cleaner or brake cleaner. That's just to keep your hands clean when you're, when you're messing with all these key components that go into this motor. This is our ring filer. Um, you can get these online, they're fairly cheap. Um, this one was like 30 bucks. Um, you don't, this is not required. It makes it really easy to make sure that you actually grind these rings um, so they're straight. If they're not straight, you can get a bad reading when you're trying to use your feeler gauges and it's overall uh, just not good practice. So one of these makes that uh, much easier to do and much faster. So before we get started to the install, uh, I, I get asked a lot, um, which ring is which? Um, the rings that come with our pistons, they actually have they actually have a letter on them. This one has a one, this is your top ring. Um, the other way to kind of tell is it's, it's more rounded. Your compression ring is always more rounded. Um, your second ring, it's got a number two right here on that ring. Uh, and it's also at a very sharp edge. You can almost cut yourself if you weren't. It's almost like a little channel, if you will. This is your wiper ring. So that's, that's important. These are directional. And then we have, this is your oil baffle ring. This is what helps oil the piston. And then these are your upper and lower rail rings. When the rings are installed, you want to stagger the rings. Um, you never want to have your rings in the same location. Reason being is oil will come and slip up past that. Rings are directional. The reason they're designed like that is to actually seal around. So normally you would spray these down with uh, assembly lube or fogging oil before you do this. However, for camera's sake and just to show everybody out there, I'm going to do it just dry, just so you get an idea of how it's supposed to be. So you got your baffle, baffle ring. And then you have two, they call them rail rings. You got an upper and a lower, it doesn't matter. These. It just doesn't matter. These are simply for oiling. You start here. You want to make sure you don't overlap that baffle. Like so. Make sure you still get some good movement going on here. Okay, did that side. Now we're coming around to the opposite side. We want to be very gentle. Okay. 
like so. It doesn't bind, it moves. Obviously, before we actually ever install it in the cylinder, we're, we're gonna um, definitely get some fogging oil or some, uh, you know, some sort of uh, lubricant for the cylinder. Uh, oil, if you're gonna build the engine right away, fogging oil if it's gonna sit for a while before you install it. Um, but yeah, nice and smooth. So now we got, we have one here. Remember we had our baffle here in the middle. Then you rotate over here and there's that one. That's how you wanna stagger these rings. Like I mentioned earlier, you have the number two on our particular rings. Uh, but again, you know, this is your wiper ring. It's got that edge on it. So we got one there, boom, boom. So now this gap is gonna go on this side. You wanna make sure it doesn't bind. There we go, there's our gap. And then you're gonna flip it. Make sure your ring's good. Boom. From when you filed earlier, if you have any burrs or any nicks right here, you won't get that nice smooth motion that you're supposed to have. But then let's get them there and we can do our other one. While keeping that in mind, the top ring gap should be smaller than the second ring. The larger the end gap on your second ring will create more stability for your top ring. Uh, this prevents ring flutter, which allows the top ring to have a better seal. So one of the very first things that I like to do before I start checking ring gap, uh, before any install really, um, I actually like, and you should do this, to clean the inside of the cylinder. Now, we use fogging oil when we're installing, um, but deep creep seems to work really well for cleaning your cylinder bores. Nice and shiny. Now for the most part, this is a 93 millimeter cylinder. Uh, we, we build these all the time, so I kind of already know the ring gap off the top of my head. Um, however, set of calipers always comes into play here. So, I'm gonna set your calipers to zero. And then you always wanna measure from this side. Be sure to change it to inches. There we go. Three point six six one. It's ninety three millimeters, almost on the dot. Um, you can do that with both. Yep, three point six six. So it's point. Yeah, they're they're close, extremely close. Now, if you're building a race motor or something like that, then you're obviously going to want to use a bore depth gauge, and then you're you're doing honing um, after, and that's just not the case with these. So we actually, just from trial and error, we actually set our our ring gap. Uh, our top ring is actually um, on these 93 millimeter. Um, cylinder bores, we actually set our top ring to uh, 15 thousandths, and then we set our second ring to 16 thousandths. Um, but if you wanted to be exact, and it all depends on the piston manufacturer as well, you definitely want to look at the specs from, a, from the piston manufacturer. Forged and forged pistons, billet pistons, and cast pistons, they all have a different uh, piston to cylinder wall clearance, and they all have a different uh, ring gap specification, especially when you wanna start uh, boosting and getting into mods. If you're doing upgraded cams, tuning, um, anything for that nature, 
um, you definitely want to adhere to those standards um, for those particular pistons. Now you keep in mind when you go to do this, um, you want to check. So you want to put your ring in, make sure it's, you know, it's facing up. And I'm actually a fan of not wearing gloves on this one. Now your ring gap So this is our top ring. You want a 50 I can't get a 15 thousandths feeler gauge in there. So we're going to have to trim that one down. Yeah. Have your pistons laid out here. So we're you want to measure about an inch down the, yeah, about an inch down that cylinder bore. Uh, that's where you're gonna do, that's where you're gonna measure your, your first and your second ring. You have to remember which rings are going to which bore. Uh, the reason being, on a 1000 motor, you're actually gonna flip this when you're done with the ring gap. So if you're actually gonna flip it, tensioner, hole for the tensioner facing away from you, and then you also have arrows on your piston. So we keep them upside down. We have the arrows face us. So what you're gonna do, it's better to have them, because when you flip them, you need your rings to match each bore. There's your ring gap, and we're going to need to get a 15, 15 thousandths of an inch in there. So we already know we need to grind this one down. It's better to do these one at a time. And you're just checking for any burrs that's going to happen when you're using one of these or you know you can you know, do it the old school way it's really hard to keep these things straight with that being said just check it Perfect.